Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter two talking about performance measurement fundamentals and moving into the last topic of this chapter that is 2.4 typical results of a performance test. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are trying to understand that how exactly a result of performance test must be derived. Because we have been talking about matrices, we have been talking about collecting them in different ways and then aggregating them to derive a conclusion about the execution. Now that's where the result plays a vital role. And of course, if the, with the result comes the basic expectations, what you really expect to happen with the application in a particular scenario and then the results must be accordingly met to those requirements but other requirements will be well defined or there are people who are so proficient to understand that how important a performance requirement is all about and to what extent it must be refined and detailed so that it meets the expectations of the performance tester. So that's what we will be expecting here to understand in this tutorial that how exactly typical results of a performance test is being prepared to meet the expectations. So in functional testing, let's start the understanding right from there that what exactly happens in functional, which becomes quite difficult when it comes to non-functional. So in functional testing, particularly when verifying specified functional requirements or functional elements, of user stories, the expected results usually can be defined clearly and the test results interpreted to determine if the test passed or failed. And of course, you do understand from an agile perspective that every user story must have a clear acceptance criteria. And when it comes to functionality, the things have been broken into so simpler form that you know exactly what it is and how to do it. So the acceptance criteria can also be recognized and well defined. For example, a monthly sales report shows either a correct or incorrect total. So they are very straightforward. But when it comes to performance, things are not so straightforward. Something could be good for one client or something could not be good for the other client or probably product to product. One of the product thinks that if I respond between uh, five to 10 seconds, that's amazing for me. But for the other product, it says, no, it has to be less than or equal to three seconds to be acceptable. Now that's what the performance has different requirements and thus the requirement plays a vital role. Whereas test that verifies functional suitability often benefit from the well-defined test oracles. So you do have amazing documentations to derive these outcomes from for the functional testing. Performance testing often lacks this source of information. Of course, you can say that there are no necessary documentation or probably not so detailed supporting documentation, which someone can actually refer to understand that what exactly performance requirements are all about. What is that the thresholds are? What is that we are expecting to happen during a scenario execution? And what kind of matrices, what kind of results we should be gathering to say that it is as expected. Now, not only that, not only are the stakeholders notoriously bad at articulating, articulating performance requirements, many business analysts and product owners are bad at eliciting such requirements. Now that's where we break down a requirement into simpler forms. And when we talk about elicitation process of the requirements, we do understand that how a requirement, a bigger requirement will be broken down into simpler form. So articulating it is all about, uh, you know, measuring it or making it measurable. So a lot of things are different when it comes to performance testing and not only stakeholders, of course, even the product owners, the business analysts find it difficult because probably they do not have extreme knowledge like a performance tester. So it becomes definitely a challenge. So testers often receive limited guidance to define the expected test results. Now, when evaluating these performance test results, it is very important to look at the results closely. Initial raw results can be misleading with the performance failures being hidden beneath apparently good overall results. For example, resource utilization may be well under 75% of all key potential bottleneck resources, but the throughput or response time of key transactions or use cases are an order of magnitude too slow. 
So though your resources says that we are below 75%, which is acceptable, but during that customization or utilization of resources, the response time is still higher. So of course, there are things which are lying behind the screen. Just saying that your limited resource was utilized during the execution does not really mean that your response time is also low. Sometime your resource is aware, like it is available for the system to make use of, but your system is still responding slow. So there is something wrong with your architecture, which you might need to work upon. So being a performance tester, it takes you to understand that how to evaluate the results and then conclude it without having some great detailed requirements and acceptance criteria being defined for it at a much, much detailed way. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.